Welcome to Sunday School at Grace Baptist Church. Before we get started today, let's pray very briefly. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray as diligently as I know how, Lord God, to ask you to bless us as we go through this lesson. We can do nothing. We cannot speak. We cannot hear. Especially when we come to the things of God except you, Lord Jesus. Guide us. Direct us. Yes, Lord, even give us your mind in these things. How we thank you for the opportunity. Oh, God, teach us. Cause us to be more pleasing to you and to live lives that would show others we belong to you. Praying for Christ's sake. Amen. May I highly recommend that you listen to last week's lesson if you have not done so. Because I believe today's message is largely dependent on what God gave us last week. So please go back. Go back to, listen to, watch the kingdom of the God before today's teaching if you did not do so. For today, for today. What are you seeking? What are you seeking? Today, we will be dealing heavily with the word seek. The particular Greek word we will be looking at is translated seek, seekest, seeketh, seeking, and sought in the King James Version and is found right at 110 times in the New Testament. This is an overwhelmingly important word. Important word in the lives of Christians, all Christians, and in the lives of all human beings when our eternal destinies come to pass. And friends, we all have an eternal destiny. The word seek means to look for, to search after, to be on the watch for, to pursue, to endeavor to obtain, to get, to strive for. Everyone is seeking something. Everyone is pursuing something. And of course, that something may involve many individual things we go after in this life. Everyone is seeking their own thing in some way. And Christians must guard against such a self centered attitude, seeking your own thing in and of yourself. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. Going to be reading for a while in this chapter. We're going to begin reading in Philippians chapter 2 with verse 19. And we're going to be reading through this first look, reading through verse 24. Philippians 2, verses 19 through 24. Paul says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, 
that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. What is your condition? For I have, listen to this, I have no one like-minded. Where he is at this time, and I believe is in prison at this time, he has no one who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. This brings to mind what Brother Gene has been saying uh, uh, over the last months or so. You know, you really don't know that many real Christians. Imagine this. Paul says he has no one like-minded who will sincerely care for you, for your state. For they all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, speaking of Timothy, that as a son with a father he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. For again, he's in prison. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Paul and Timothy were obeying the commandment Paul sent to the Corinthians. And we see that spoken of in 1 Corinthians 10.24. No one seek, no one seek or pursue after his own thing, but each one that of the other. As Christians, we must be always mindful, ever mindful of this commandment. If, if we truly love one another, we seek to honor God's word as in Romans 12.10. Kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another or preferring one another. Not, uh, one another, excuse me. Do some of you remember the old saying, I'm looking out for number one? And of course, number one was me. Number one was ourselves. If God has given you a new heart and put his very Holy Spirit in you, the days of that saying are gone. And from the heart... You can truly seek to put others before yourself as God by His Spirit empowers you. This is seeking the things of Christ. The same line of thought is seen at the beginning of this very same chapter, chapter 2. I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 4, Philippians chapter 2, 1 through 4. Please listen closely. Therefore, if any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy... Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love of one accord, of one mind. Nothing through selfish ambition or conceit. Listen now, listen. But in lowliness of mind, let, let each esteem others better than than himself. Friends, that's absolutely impossible for the normal human being 
in a consistent manner. In lowliness, lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. In and of ourselves, we are not wired that way. What are we seeking? The end of Philippians chapter 2 gives us an example of a human being who was not seeking his own. Epaphroditus, and I want to read about Epaphroditus, who thought of others and of Christ before himself. Reading at verse 25 through the end of that chapter. Yet I considered it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus. Some of you may say, well, now didn't he say he had no one? Well, this man had come from the Philippians to deliver uh, 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 sustenance for Paul and was part of the group of these Philippians. So if Paul is not sending someone from himself. He's sending someone back who belongs to the group anyway. Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker and fellow soldier, but your messenger, see, he was sent from them to Paul originally, and the one who ministered to my need. Since he was longing for you all and was distressed because you had heard that he was sick. Now, how sick was he? For indeed, was, he was sick almost unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I sent him the more eagerly, that when you see him again, you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such men in esteem. Because for the work of Christ, he came close to death, not regarding his life to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. Now that doesn't mean that they were lacking, but they were supplying the lack that he had in service toward Paul, if you understand what I'm saying, and I hope so. They were doing a service toward Paul by taking care, by supplying what he lacked. Folks, what an example of a man who put others before himself almost to the point that it cost him his life. What am I seeking? What are you seeking? Our own things? Or the things of others, which are the things of Christ. We learned, I pray, from our lesson on the kingdom of the God, that God has a powerful adversary. That adversary would usurp the throne of God in the hearts of God's people if he could. That enemy... The devil, seeing that he cannot take the throne, is still seeking to deceive God's very elect. But greater is the spirit of Christ inside the elect of God than the spirit <clears throat> of this world. Prince of the demons. Thank God. Thank God that this Holy Spirit will give us that ultimate victory. 
But folks, please, please don't fail to realize that fallen human beings, born sinners, also seek to be enthroned in their own hearts. That was you and I before. God forbid that we slip back towards such a thing. The Old Testament book of Judges closes with these words. In those days, no king in Israel. Everyone did right in his own eyes. There was no human king at that time, and the people would not bow the knee to the Lord God. Not long after this, the Lord said to Samuel, They, the people of the nation of Israel at that time, they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Folks, that was you and I before the Lord God saved us. We wouldn't bow the knee to the Lord God. They preferred to seek, to pursue, to follow after their own things. Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25 are identical. In other words, God says two times in great warning, he says this, there is a way right to man. But its end, but its end, that way is right to man, the ways of death. Death is separation from God. And of course, separation from the kingdom of the God, also known as the kingdom of the heavens as we saw last week. If we do not perceive this kingdom in the mind's eye and enter that kingdom spiritually by grace, through faith, in this life, we will not enter heaven in the life to come. 1 Timothy 4.8 speaks of the life that now is and that which is to come. The life that now is. And what you seek now will determine the life which is to come to you. What you seek now will determine the life which is to come for you. Same for me. We have learned in the past from Psalm 14 and Psalm 53, again twice said, that no one, no not one, seeks after God, and of course that means on their own, doing their own thing. We have also learned, I pray, here in the last several months more deeply, that we must be born again before we can perceive with the mind's eye spiritual things. That new birth caused by the sovereign will of God, not of man, enables us to believe the gospel and to become and to become partakers, to become partakers of the kingdom of the God where we bow the knee. Not in presentation 
Uh, not in going through the motions, but we bow the knee from the heart to our Lord, our King, our Savior, our God, Jesus Christ. It's at that point, at this point of which I now speak, where our seeking is in the right direction. Once we have been born again, bowed the knee to Christ, believed the gospel, it's at that point where our seeking will be in the right direction. Or should I say, in the righteous direction. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That becomes real to us when God regenerates us and gives us the life of Christ. To obey that command... And, and the command I speak of is, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. It's not a suggestion. To obey that command, we must learn that Christ is the King of the kingdom of the God. And He is also our righteousness. So, so, putting one and one together to make two... First, we must seek Him. We hunger and thirst after righteousness. Therefore, as the scripture puts it, we must eat His flesh and drink His blood spiritually. We must consume Christ. He is our daily bread. We do this spiritually through the Holy Spirit of Christ who is in us, who indwells us. He gives us Christ's mind and fills us with Christ's fruit of which we have studied from his scripture. We live not by physical bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And we find that word in the Holy Scriptures. We are created in Christ Jesus and are a people after God's own heart. If we are seeking Him who is righteous, we, be, we will be enabled to seek what is righteous, that which is righteous. What, again may I ask, what are we seeking? We must examine ourselves. Are we seeking our own things or the things of Christ, which surely includes being kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another or preferring one another. What does that mean, preferring one another, giving preference to one another? It's simple. Considering others before you consider yourself. Thinking of others' welfare before you think of your own. Are we seeking the things of Christ? 
Oh, pray. Pray that God will empower us. And we must never forget. Let me leave you with this. We must never forget, all of us, all of us, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven us. Amen.